Good morning. Um, my name is Jackie Sears, Tribal Council Representative for Wak Albany District. And um, I'm part of the task force that was um, put together by the tribe to organize and get the um, constitutional reform up and going. So I'm only here as a support for our um, staff that was um, selected to that applied and volunteered and were selected to come out and host these meetings. So um, my only purpose today is to s just sit back and um, just be here for the people and for support. I won't have any input and and, uh, and I think our council representatives, we invited them to come so they can listen. You know, they're, they're um, here just to listen and, and um, hear what the people have to say and like that, so just kind of a, as a support too. And uh, before we get started, I want to um, ask uh, Philip um, Goodcrow from the Wapama, from the Porcupine District. <laughs> <laughs> Porcupine District. <laughs> Council representative, you say the opening prayer. Walk bomb, eh? <laughs> Good morning to everybody. Uh, we have a few more coming, and, and I put it on uh, Facebook also, and hopefully that uh, uh, more will be trickling in. I told them that they don't have to be here all day, half a day, or they could spend an hour, two hours, or you know, to whatever they, they wish. But I want to thank uh, Harry and our district chairman Nick here today, and uh, uh, to give input. Harry's been an employee of the BIA up in Aberdeen for a long time and he's very interested in, uh, in uh, tribal politics and, and attends a lot of meetings here on the, on the district level, district or school board or whatever the case may be. And we also have Nick Hernandez as our district chairman. He's uh, very interested in, in uh, developing the Brookpine district and uh, moving forward. So I, I welcome them them two here and, and uh, this is my first meeting as, as the constitutional revision and I want to thank the crew, Jackie and uh, the rest, Robin, Stephanie, Tina, Lisa. Lisa. And there's another meeting over in Madison right now regarding the same issue. As <clears throat> At this time, I want to uh, introduce our facilitator, um, Ms. Nakina Mills. And she's uh, one of our nation rebuilders for the Bush Foundation that she uh, was participating in. So she's going to take the meeting from here and um, like to welcome her. She volunteered her time to do this because she felt it was really important that, you know, uh, we needed to um, make some revisions to the Constitution now. So, you know, welcome Nakina for all your help. and. Um, good, you know, ha hope this meeting is run the way that we, you, we want it for the people to have input. So thank you, Nikina. I was just going to say, don't be giving me a hard time. Uh, so I, I'd just like to welcome you guys all here. I'm um, really looking forward to hearing your input um, and positive um, positive strength-based approach of our constitution and trying to bring change. Um, I would also like to have um, um, Connie just introduce yourself and say what you're doing and also Tama for what, what they're here in support for. Good morning, my name is Constance Pumpkinsey Tedmeers. Um, I am the administrative assistant recorder process. 
process um, by the Defaults Committee for sure. Uh, I believe this is the first time that people actually had a voice in shaping in the Constitution, so I'm excited that you guys are here to, to extend that. So, uh, I'm a nation rebuilder as well, so I'm here to just support. I will be running the poster boards and the marker, so forgive me for my misspellings. I have time. Thank you. Um, so, so basically, um, right now I'll go, I'll start with uh, what, what we're kind of looking like, our agenda is going to look, uh, go over. So we'll start with a brief introduction, um, your name and where you're from. Um, please don't make me set a timer. Um, we'd want to keep this brief. <laughs> um, so, and then we'll go into like five minutes each of like, a, uh, you could either go into like uh, five minutes, of like either a like or a dislike or both, just so that it's uh, five minutes. Um, we really wanna like try and stay away from um, bringing, like complaining about what's, what's not working with the constitution. Like it's fine to bring examples and they say something that happened, but really trying to like just keep it at that and then move forward past that and bringing like a solution as to how you think how you think it can um, work. So so we'd like to just kind of go from there. Um, we're we're going to do like a timeline. I don't want to spend too much time on the timeline because because we all know we all know or we should at least all know our treaties or kind of what has happened to our our people our land base um, the removal of our language our culture. So we'll, we'll have like a brief timeline of our, um, of the treaties, the IRA, um, and then we'll eventually get into the 17 articles of our constitution. Uh, we'll have discussion. Um, you guys, in your packets, there is a survey that is broken down into the 17 ar articles. Um, so in that, in that survey, um, you can start like saying what you like about it, what you dislike, what you would change, um, um, and then we'd greatly appreciate you can if you if you get done with it when you if you can turn it in at the end, or you can turn it in at the we we at your district center, um, or give it to one of your council reps to turn into the task force. Um, but that survey they have to be in by what is it, Jackie? December December twenty second. Um, and then we will also be leaving these packets, right? At the dish, they should be at district centers so that people can go in and get them as well. Um, so really appreciate that input from the surveys. Um, and then at the end, we'll just cover where, where the other scheduled meetings will be happening until around the uh, middle of December. Um, so with that, um, I'm gonna pass around the mic if you guys can do like a, a brief introduction. I think it should reach you guys. You guys are all pointing at each other. <laughs> Ready to set timer? Yeah. Gotta set timer. So my name is uh, Nick Hernandez. I am resident uh, here at Pajisinte, Oscape, um, residing in the um, community of the Knife Chief. Um, and let's go into the five minutes of dislike and like. Well, we'll do, we'll do the introductions, introductions first. Yeah. Okay, well that's me. Good morning. Uh, my name is Harry Eagable. I'm a community member here, have been for the past 20 years or so. Originally grew up in Pine Ridge and I'm quite interested in our tribal government and the Constitution. I only wish that we would have had copies of these to go over before we came to this meeting. Uh, it sure makes it a lot easier on the people and I think that's one of the reasons why we don't get good representation and input because you come and you get a pack of material and I've been reading it since I came in here and uh, 
I could see that it would have been much, much more beneficial to me and probably more beneficial to you on my, any comments I might have if I had had the opportunity to go over this information and make my comments. So that's what I've been doing since I've gotten here and I have quite a few comments that I've made. And hopefully, uh, I know I won't get all of this read before we start now, so I'm going to just kind of skip around here. Thank you. Morning, my name is Phil Vitcro, Council representation, Representative from Porcupine District. One of the questions I had is, is that at any given moment, uh, any participant, uh, whoever's here can uh, stand up and, and use a mic to give their uh, like, dislike, opinions, whatever the case may be. But is, that, is that correct? Um, so or is it more of kind of in line with? In the beginning, we'll do like one like, dislike in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then throughout, then we'll get into the presentation and then the mm -hmm. articles. And then the articles is where we'll like talk about the articles, each article. Um, so in the beginning, it's just one like, one dislike. Okay, thank you. Thank you. get into like just a little bit of the history of um, how like where, like where we're at today um, so back in 1778 the treaty with uh, Delaware Indians this was the first treaty between the United States and the Indian tribes Apologize too. We we uh, we were supposed to have a Lakota language interpreter at this meeting, but she did um, fall ill, so she is sick, Mary Lane. Um, so we will do the best that we can with uh, if, if anybody's needing any um, Lakota language um, interpretations of anything. Um, for uh, um, what we're just now doing is like just a little brief introduction of the name, your name, and um, like where you're from, the community that you're from. My grandpa's, my dad, and the Citizens of the United States on you. Okay, we have two identities. You were citizen of the United States and then we are the court again. <laughs> so I don't know what I, I, I'm, I'm a bit between. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, I'm Carolyn Tail. I live in Evergreen Community. Um, we live off road north of Evergreen, and I'm Eli's wife, and I've lived here for about 20 years. Um, just real quick, I'll explain um, 
uh, in your guys' packet is on the first page is the survey. Um, it's broken down um, with the 17 articles. Uh, th this one right here. This is the survey right here. Um, so in it, it breaks down the articles and there's like a like, dislike, um, any additions or changes that you'd like with your constitution. This here is your constitution. Um, so we'll eventually get to that towards the end. Right now we're just kind of going through like the timeline of the treaties and um, of how we got here today. Um, so we were just now getting ready to start with the um, colonial period, um, 1492 to 1828. Um, this just kind of just shows you some of the, like, uh, the, the start of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the Marshall Trilogy. Um, basically, this is when we started acquiring Indian lands through doctrine of discovery, um, the treaties between the sovereign nations, uh, settlements mostly on the East Coast, settlements were west of the Appalachians, um, were forbidden to keep peace with the Indians as well as as well as to discourage any alliance between them and France. So this was kind of this, this period, this colonial period. Um, next became the removal and re relocation period, 1828 to 1871. Um, and as you can see, um, all these things listed here were indications of the resentment towards indigenous lands and resources. So this is when they came in and started demanding the land um, Eastern tribes were moved to the center of the country. Uh, relocation of Eastern tribes caused conflicts with tribes of the Great Plains. Um, and again, the removal policy. Uh, the, so the next one here, this was the, 18, the, tre the original uh, 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty, just to kind of show you the boundaries of the Great Sioux Nation there, just to kind of give you guys um, to, give you, to show you like where we started. Um, during this time, hundreds of treaties were made. Uh, many of these treaties were for hunting, fishing, gathering rights. Uh, these treaties are still valid and must be considered when carrying out provisions of programs um, that, that are here in our, in our tribe. Uh, US government, um, so I, I'll pause. Uh, after here, and then I'll let um, Melanie introduce herself. We'll just do a little brief intro. Uh, but in various times, the US government was either will, unwilling or unable to prevent states and settlers from violating treaties. Um, 1871 treaty writing came to an end during that time. We'll have uh, Melanie do a, little, a brief, just a brief like name where you're from. Good morning, my name is Melanie Blackwell. I'm from the Porcupine District. I've been a district member all my life. It's good that we're seeing um, a constitutional reform, but it's kind of sad there's only a few people here. I hope that whatever we put on these documents, it doesn't get changed and it gets expressed to our tribal council. Um, I really hope that the next time they have it, um, I wanted to explain something. The last time they had a secretarial election, I filled out a form three times and I wasn't even on the list. Are you two sitting on this process all the way through? Are you guys selected by the tribal council? I just wanna ask you. Okay. I just want to add, um, for sure I understand your concerns. Uh, I'm a volunteer. Uh, I'm uh, invested in this process as well. I have a, a full stop holding it. My children are not with that. But um, the packets that have the surveys, this is just step one. So what we're going to take your concerns, we're going to walk through the articles, we're going to log anything that we'd like to see changed. And then what we'll do from that is we'll take it to the next process and then come back out to district 
so that you have an opportunity to see the changes that you'd like to see within that. So you will get to see the process all the way through if you're interested. Okay, so nothing was premeditated and given to the BIA already to have them put it in proper language. Nothing was prepared. Mm -hmm. This is just the starting point here. Yep. Okay, yeah, yeah. just making sure that there isn't no fraud or mm -hmm. any special interests a part of this process. Uh, the, only, the only special interest we have is our own. As Lakota people are trying to get our own sovereignty and our own government and the, own, uh, the Constitution that we'd like to see it step away from the IRA, but then having your own state involved. Yeah, but anything that has to do with the IRA, that it's corrupted, it's uh, self, how do you want to say, gratification. I mean, I'm happy that you two are not affiliated with this tribal government in any shape or form. That way we can get an honest um, account of everything going on here. I know you worked at Red Cloud. I don't know where you come from, Red Cloud. Okay. But a lot of the concerns, you know, going to the communities, they want to see grassroots. They want to see grassroots people involved and a part of this process all the way to the counting of the ballot and really being a part of it. I know that it's, it's volunteer. A lot of our people are Ushika. A lot of our people have a hard time. And that's what we're faced with right now. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for, for those comments. Um, and we totally understand uh, the concern and know that, that this is why we're here. I mean, if I wouldn't be standing up here today if I didn't support what was happening. So, so and, and that's why I like, truly believe like, the people have the power, we just gotta give them that voice. So. so that was the original boundaries of the 1851 um, treaty. Um, Mally, this is kind of what we're doing. Uh, we're just right now kind of just doing like a refresher of some treaties that kind of brought us to where we are today. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. Oh dear Lord, what did I just hit? Okay. <laughs> Um, so then um, a new treaty, the 1868 Fort Laramie, established the Sioux Reservation on the land com um, compromising the western half. So you can see, so you can see how it went from this to this. So again, you know, taking the land um, from, that, the, from the 1868 Fort Laramie, established those boundaries. Um, and then next, uh, the 1876-1877, the U.S. Army fought the Sioux who remained outside the reservation. Um, um, Custer's troops, uh, Little Bighorn, so you can see, you can see there, like, the other reservation boundaries. Uh, this was then the, that the government then seized the Black Hills and the other Sioux land. Then brings us to the Allotment Act. 1871-1928, again, more Indian lands were taken from the settlements by the federal government. Um, federal law um, expanded into the internal tribal affairs. Indian children forced to attend government and church, church-run boarding schools. Um, due to a number of Indians fighting in World War I for the U.S., the federal government offered U.S. citizenships to the Indians in 1924, something that, that you had brought up. Um, so, so that again, 1871 to 1928, and then, okay, then in 1889, uh, North and South Dakota moved towards statehood. The 21 million acre reservation was cut by half. So you can see there, um, and the remaining land divided into six smaller reservations, which. Um, which we see today, some of the reservation land was later open to the settlers. Then in 1980, um, or so then 1899 to the 2012, this timeline, 1980, the Supreme Court ordered the US government to pay for its appropriation of the Hasapa, the Black Hills, with interest. This, this is the stuff we hear about today, about the, the Black Hills, uh, more than a billion dollars but the Oglala Sioux tribe and other tribes continue to hold true to never giving up the rights of the Black Hills. 
then, then we get into the reorganization period, 1928 to 1945. Uh, this ended the allot allotments of, of the U.S. government, um, so began to restore some of the Indian lands. Uh, the U.S. government created programs, projects for health facilities, irrigation, roads, homes, schools, um, to sort of help restore some of the um, Indian economic and cultural life. Um, and then in 1934, the reorganization app, the New Deal, um, which established modern tribal government. Uh, this was the first time that tribal governments were organized. I'm, I'm pretty sure that kind of, that comment even alone probably stirs some stuff because we kind of had it, we had our own cultural governance back in the day too. So um, I know this probably brings up a lot of. Um, it could bring up a lot of feelings of how we feel about the United States and things. So just, I just like to, like, just so that we're aware that I'm just bringing this history up just so that we can kind of get into bringing some positive stuff, like bringing some of that cultural stuff back into our constitution. Um, with that being said, um, then we get into the termination and relocation period, 1945, 1965. Um, uh, this terminated what government previously endorsed, so trust, trusting relationships between the federal and tribal governments, um, south government of the tribe, a hundred tribes ceased to be recognized during this time, and then the BIA started a, a relocation period <coughs> where 40% of the Indian people um, still resided in the cities. This brings us to the self-determination period, 1965 to present day. Um, this was, you know, the, abuse, the abuses of termination and relocation period led to reforms. Um, the federal government expanded the powers um, of the tribal South government and restored recognition of tribes. Um, the Indian Civil Rights Act, this is just to name some of the different acts that were during that time frame. Um, American Indian Religious Freedom Act, uh, Native American Graves Protection, and um, so those acts were all during that time. Um, then it kind of brings us to the timeline today and what, and what we're looking like with our districts. You just see the little, and then the scattering of the, the state of South Dakota. Um, so then brings us to the Ochete Sakoi, um, the five million acres of the original treaty land. Uh, through the Bureau of Indian Affairs, tribes can arrange leases of reservation land used mainly for grazing. Um, some leases go to the Indians, others were outsiders. Uh, because of the way the land was originally allotted, we had been left with lease um, protect, protect productive tracts. So with that being said, it kind of brings us to the IRA. Um, so the Wheeler Howard Act of 1934. Uh, this just shows shows you the the kind of the federal government. So the Title I um, established governments. Um, it just shows you the federal government with the tribal government and the state being the dotted line. Um, this kind of brought about education, Indian preference with the BIA. Uh, repeals allotment system, lands, it did a lot, of, it established this time, and then the tribal court system were things that the IRA government, that came from the IRA government. And then here we, oh dear Lord, why is this? Okay. Um, this was, this is the Howard, this is the act right here. You can't read it, it's very small. If you do need it, we can definitely get it for you. Um, but just some of the purposes, and just so you know, there's 17 sections in that act. Um, some of the purpose of the IRA for uh, the act was the termination of the um, 1877 Allotment Act. Uh, basically, no land of any Indian reservation created or um, set apart by treaty or agreement with the Indians. Uh, this was an act of Congress, executive order, purchase, or otherwise shall be allotted in um, to any Indian. So that, that basically was some of the purpose of the IRA. Um, so then, 
then the different terms of the IRA, these were, these were the components of the IRA. So there was the trust period, the sur surplus land, pro prohibition of the Indian land sales, rights of the Department of the Interior, Secretary of the Interior Directives, uh, recognition of new reservations, allotments, homesteads, public domain, established funds for tribes, loans, education, Indian preference in civil service claims against the U.S., tribes sharing reservations, constitutional powers, tribal incorporation, and non-application. Um, and we'll, go, we'll get into each one of those just so you guys can see. Um, I don't know, do you guys feel like you need a refresher? Or do you guys want to get right into the articles? What does non-application mean? Um, so that's like the, the last one. Yeah, it's the very last one. Because I'm getting a refresher as well. <laughs> so non-application was the act that shall not apply to any reservation wherein a majority of the adult Indians voting at a special election duty called the Secretary of Interior. That means they should shall vote against its application. That's basically what it is. So, so he brought up that uh, one of the treaties that wasn't up here was the Louisiana Purchase, the 18, was it 1803. Um, so I was just putting up some of them. I didn't touch base on all the treaties. I just, I just put some of them in the power. We just had some of them in the PowerPoint. There was hundreds of treaties that led to, to how we are here today. But yes, you are right. That is definitely one of them that was an important one. Um, and, and I probably will add that into this PowerPoint for the next, the next one. Um, so do you guys feel like you need to get into the IRA? I kind of feel like we don't need to. Are you guys okay with moving just to the... Okay, geez, that's a lot. Yeah, because if we would have did the IRA, that would have been... So basically, the IRA we would have, we would have just broke them down into each one of the sections. Claims against the U.S. Constitutional powers. Any preference? Wait. What the? Okay. Okay. So now that gets us to. So with that, that'll take us to part three. That's the actual, our, our actual constitution that you guys each got a um, copy of. Um, Bev, I'm just gonna have you do like a little, just brief little intro. Just so, I mean, I know who you are. <laughs> I'm pretty sure your community members probably know who you are. They My name is Bev Tuttle. Ampo Ojanja Najibwe is my Lakota name. I proudly say it because it was given to me by one of my aunties that passed on. And I'm here to, um, from my district, I am a federal monitor for um, Council Representative Philip Goodcrow, also in that capacity, but also very involved at the local level for child protection services. I'm um, doing a little coalition of um, child protection service project within our district. So all of these things that are here today are very important for me to know about and what I can do to help make change. Thank you. Oh, and I'm also a school board member. Thank you. Okay. So that brings us to our tribal constitution, or just that brief history. Um, again that 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 i just went over kind of quickly um so our constitution for the tribe um, was approved january 15 1936. um there's been one two three four so four amendments to this constitution the first one being in 1969 um 
and it was approved December 24th. And then there was some amendments in 1985, ni uh, 1997, and then in 2008. Um, so the last revision in 2008, I have here um, a slide that shows the revisions that Okay, so the slides are, it shows here the revisions that happened in 2008. Um, and in it, so there's 17 articles, and in this revision there was only nine revisions at the time. So only, out of 17, there was only nine revisions of the article, of, of those articles, of the 17 articles, there was only nine revisions. And eight articles have not been revised since 1997. Um, so just to kind of show you, um, so just in 2008 membership, there's only two sections, um, and I believe that if you refer to your constitution, they're pretty small. Um, and in that revision, there was there was section one and section two, and, and they added A and B, I think. And then the powers of the council, there's three sections. Um, and the changes was they, that in 2008 was they added the Bill of Rights, or they made it the Bill of Rights into an article. Um, and then so if you refer to the Constitution that you have, um, it just lists what, which, which were revised in that section. Um, judicial powers was another one. Um, and then go down, Bill of Rights was made an article. And then the responsibilities of the executive committee uh, qualifications of tribal council, oath of office, meetings and procedures, and then this national Sioux um, council. Uh, those were the only changes that happened in 2008. Um, and I will also thank you. Well, we tell, we tell Ernie. Um, and then Tama did mention it earlier um, about how prior. Um, like at least I think, I think it was mentioned at the treaty one at, at the casino that this has been the first time that, that we went out to the people like this. Um, so trying to give this voice to the, the people on, on, you know, this constitution, what they feel like we need to be adding to it, changing things like that. Um, Ernie, I would just like to do, have you just, a, you know, you know this bill, a brief intro, who you are, where you're from, in case some don't know who you are. Uh, my name is Ernie Little. I'm from uh, White Clay, uh, Oglala Junior Community in Oglala District. And uh, just kind of interested in what's going on. And just, uh, I work around with land. I'm a landowner. And uh, uh, I think it's great that you're doing this. I just came to listen. Thank you. So maybe, so I guess I already kind of messed up. I'm glad I, did, I'm glad I waited till now to, to realize this. But Phil, when I, we talked about the like and the dislikes, we didn't even get into it. But now we're here at the Constitution, so I think this is, this is an appropriate time for us, if you guys wanted to go around the room, and maybe if there was something you like about the Constitution or something you don't like about the Constitution, just one thing. Um, and then Tama over here will, um, gladly use his fancy writing to, to just to, just something for us to make reference to. Maybe we could let some of the people here digest some more information than we could do. Then do it? Is yeah, that how you're kind of flexible? Is that okay with you guys? Is that you okay with you guys or would you guys like to go around? Well see, so this, this is the thing too, is if we do it now, we just do it one time now. But then when we're going into the articles, then we can get into it more then. It's just kind of give us a good little starter on, on to what we're getting into. So, so how, who wants to do it now? One, just one thing, one like, one dislike. Are you guys okay with that? Just one? <laughs> right now it's just one. Okay. We know there's gonna be many other things that people wanna do throughout, but well, this, it'll just be good to have us like get us started on. And I'm, are you guys want me to start on this side or this side? Can we do three? Can we do three? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say let's keep this, let's keep this brief for right now. If you, if you want to say three and keep it brief and it's brief, then we'll say five minutes for each person. 
something like this. Like as we go with our outputs, I will share these logs yeah. as, as you have on your uh, survey. Things that you like, things that you uh, don't like, things you agree with, things you don't agree with, any additional changes you'd like to see in the or anything you'd like to do, I will surely log all of that so you have a visual uh, poster board to see it. And then, like we said, um, your surveys are not good until they're not in back until the 22nd. So we can just write these up on the board. Uh, you're more welcome to take them with you home. So if you want to further respect the Constitution and any uh, things that you'd like to add later, you can surely do that and get those turned in then. But then what I can do is have a huge running board so that we're all aware of this is something that I'm sure want to see change. And then we'll make sure that we keep going and those get uh, turned into the property. Okay, with that PowerPoint, is that PowerPoint that we made available to our tribal members? Um, I think they can make it available, right? On the because there's a, there's going to be a website, a Facebook, Snapchat. I'm just kidding. There's no Snapchat. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure they said it would be Facebook. Because um, then some of these pages right here would be interesting to look at and research yep. and pull up. Yeah. Because sure. some of the statutes and some of the regulations don't coincide. Yeah. There's definitely like yeah. When I was so looking at yeah, yeah, definitely. I totally agree. But yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll get it on their Facebook and wherever the website that I think they're, they're creating for all this. So. so we'll go ahead and start with Bev. Sorry to throw you out there. I know, it's So you're, what you're asking is what? One like. One like of, of this, of um, this hand that you pan like this? Uh, Are you looking at the hand? Oh, what like? So okay. something in the Constitution, maybe you don't, okay. maybe you already don't agree with the membership. Yeah. Okay, I, I know you said one, and just to get started, there's several things like Melanie said that you know could be addressed, but I just really look at the referendum. I like the fact that it is in the Constitution, however, we aren't um, really abiding by that when it comes to council decision making, that such big entity decisions should be made by the people in general. You know, like the state, they have their um, summertime, they have their additions to their, um, to their um, precincts of what they dislike and what they want changed. We don't do that, we should do that. Like, um, I'm just gonna use an example, you know, like taking, uh, taking charters and, you know, um, that is something I think that really should go to the people, not held with the council membership, but to be held by the people generally to say we don't want, want this or we want this. So the referendum piece is a good thing, but also we need to take more um, accountability and responsibility from the people to vote on those things. So that's what I have to say. Okay. You don't have to excuse my spelling. My fancy writing is fourth grade scribbles. So. I'm horrible at spelling. I would have to say two, term limits and blood quantum. And my reason, yep, no, those are things that need to be addressed. Term limits, you have some council who've been on the council for about 18, 20 some years, and then you look at the corruption, you look at the connections, you look at the relationships, you look at the boards, you look at land distribution, you look at jobs, you look at, you look at all of that, it all ties in. And that does need to be addressed. We need to have term limits. So there's con constant change and you have some council who aren't even educated. Education is a priority. We encourage our kids to go to college, yet when they come back, there's nothing here. And you have people in positions who don't have no degrees, but they're making the big bucks and it's a hierarchy. So that needs to be addressed is term limits, education, and blood quantum. Blood quantum, it should be one fourth. But I really hope term limits becomes a part of that on all the charters, on all boards. Um, I know that's stated in there, um, allocation, you look at, um, I guess that's pretty much it, those ones. That was a, that was a lot in your five minutes, that's good. <laughs> I heard you being 
Sure. I guess uh, just a couple of things. I, I, I know uh, when I was younger, I wasn't uh, too involved. Uh, I know in, in my family, there's a number of uh, um, people that represented our district. So, but I also had a lot of family that uh, moved off because of uh, careers or jobs and uh, housing and uh, various things. And, uh, and they always ask uh, who got elected or what went on. And I understand at one time that uh, some of the members, you know, that were off reservation outside of just college or medical had the uh, ability or had the uh, leeway of voting. But what you hear now is uh, the, the, if you're a registered Nogalasu tribe, wherever you are, you should have the ability to vote whoever your leadership is. That, that you hear resounding across this reservation. That I think is really important. The other thing is uh, um, a lot of the uh, um, issues is uh, created by uh, authority. You know, and, uh, in this Article Five, it kind of lays out the judicial powers, and I think we have to figure out how to put that in place. Somewhere that separation has to be there. The three, the three uh, divisions have to be um, followed. So I want to say them two things. I got a, a number of other things, but uh, I'd like to say that you know, and uh, that's resounding. Uh, um, and throughout the years that I've uh, been conscious of, uh, of our tribal government. Thank you. also would be term limits but with um, staggered terms um, so that we have an actual working government that doesn't um, flip every two years but also look at uh, staggered terms in terms of four years. Um, my, my thing also would be on land. Um, when we're talking about land here in the um, Constitution it makes it pretty hard to um, be able to utilize land as as tribal owners for um, development and uh, um, agriculture. So I guess that would be one that would be stressful would be uh, a more, uh, a process that's uh, um, better equipped for um, future growers and ranchers and um, developers. sure what we were supposed to be doing. I, I'm kind of new chance, so I can't hear all that great sometimes. But I guess one that I was just looking at, we got the perimeter territory. Uh, I guess one, well first of all, I think there's some areas in our existing constitution that we need to have more and more clarification because if you're developing a con constitution or bylaws, it should be so written that there's no option for interpretation. It should be black and white and that's it. But there's some places in here that I could interpret it one way, somebody will do another way, and we don't get anywhere that. So I think we need to go over this with a fine tooth comb and make sure that there's not, and I found a couple areas in here that are conflicting within one section. Um, 
A definition of terms is always good to have. For example, there's a question on who can inherit a lot of land, who can inherit its assignment land, and all of those things that we need to really look at. But one I'm going to mention just right now for a start is this territory. We've heard, and if you read the newspapers, the Lakota Times or the Native, uh, Native American, whatever that other one is, they're talking about people living in Rapid City. I really think they have a legitimate point. I think they have a legitimate concern. I don't know if it'll ever happen. If you take a look at the definition here, it says the jurisdiction of the Oglala Sioux tribe shall extend to the territories within the original confines of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation boundaries. Yet, we have 638 contracts in Rapid City. And to me, they have no jurisdiction in Rapid City. If you go back, and if you're familiar with 95, 93, 638, and for example, the Johnson O'Malley, we have a contract in Rapid City for the Johnson O'Malley. Rapid City is not in the jurisdiction of the tribe. But the law 638 says that the tribe can determine if it's on or near the reservation that they can have contracts there. And that's how they got the Johnson Valley contract there. But there's much more to that than just doing that. So I think we need to look at what do we really mean with the jurisdiction area of of the tribe. It makes sense, of course, that it's the reservation boundaries, but I think the tribe is going to have to deal with the concerns of those tribal members living in Rapid City. I really think that's, uh, that's a very important thing, and somewhere it's got to be addressed, and now's the time to do it. I would like uh, the, the issue of uh, what Harry just brought up, term limits also too, and Rosebud has a nice uh, term limit and uh, they're utilizing that. And so I think the Guadalupe tribe should also, uh, uh, you know, take into consideration of term limits. Uh, and, and a lot of, uh, several people here have discussed why. So, uh, you know, those some, some of the same reasons uh, uh, I have. The other one is uh, uh, district, uh, not, uh, but our, uh, uh, our, each of our district boundaries, that needs to be settled because uh, this has been going on for years and years and years and we tried it and people uh, generally just, uh, 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 districts that are um, adjacent to each other are very critical of each other but nothing, nothing is solved. So I, I don't know how, it's going to take a while to get that re resolved, but I think it could happen. So those are two. As far as li uh, uh, likes, I'm not going to discuss anything until um, on the, uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> My husband and I were talking and <clears throat> uh, I pretty much agree with him and with the comments of the other gentleman that there needs to be some clarification on the statement of jurisdiction and whether, whether it's jurisdiction over members, you know, actions of members or rights of members versus jurisdiction over land or areas of land. That's one area that we think is critical also should be further addressed. And then I was wondering myself about, um, there's a section in here about um, how many district representatives a particular district should have. And it's based on uh, like a thousand people. And you know, I, I, it seems like our census is ongoing and changing all the time. And so I would like to just see some clarification about that. Um, as to who is a member of the district, um, or how many members the district has. And I, I know it's probably not appropriate in the tribal constitution, but it becomes even more critical to us here locally when we are wondering who's in which community. 
So um, as an extension of that, I'm not sure if it should be addressed here or, or in the district constitution as to the communities, but um, there's no reference in here to the communities anymore. Um, and so I would like to see a, just maybe a statement that the communities have a right to organize too. So something along those lines. And there was one more thing I was thinking of, but I can't remember it right now. <laughs> One every two years, let's just say, oh, you talk up in a national lecture, oh, you talk up, but nothing changes last since I can remember. Okay, Porcupine District, what, what uh, me and some Lakotas were, were talking that we need to get on our own over here, Porcupine District, get away from the tribal government. It's, it's not working good for us. I mean, how has the Tsu tribe helped the Lakota people here in the Porcupine area. It hasn't changed. Instead, they're dividing us up. It became Shannon County now. Shannon County, Bennett County, Shannon County. And there's a Bureau of Indian Affairs there, the Sioux tribe there, and Shannon County Board of Directors there. So who is the authority? At the head should go caught by, we, we can't say, we, we don't do nothing, so they do these things to us. What we need to do is get on our own over here, Porcupine District, and we can develop our own culture to uh, bylaws, whatever, and get some jobs going over here for our Lakota people. We have uh, ideas to do that. But as long as the Ugla Sioux tribe do us, I don't know who the Sioux are, they said the Lakota, but this is Sioux tribe. Maybe we can get away from those Sioux guys. Get away from Lakota, and we, we, want, we can do a lot of things on our, our own district. Porcupine District, the Lakota region, they, they're really not um, happy with what the, what the Gulasu tribe is doing to us. They, they, don't, they, they don't get help. Instead, they put us on welfare. They could just put us on a lot of things, and we can't do nothing. But we can do something. We can change. We can we get up from the Gulasu tribe. We can do something on our own in Porcupine District. We, are, we have a lot of educated people here, Brooklyn District. Instead, they got Shannon County here, tribal government here, BIA here, so we don't know who, where to go. We can have, we have our little uh, community governments, but then, then we don't have no uh, money to do anything. But what we, we talked about, the Lakota, we talked about, we need to get away from the Glasgow tribe and get our own, our own, get our, we got a lot of educated people here, we can do something, we have a lot of, from uh, Sydney to the areas of the boundaries there, in Nebraska borders, we got a lot to land here. Instead they divide us up, there's a community here, the community here, the community here, but we need to get away from, get, get on our own, what I'm trying to say. And now let's look up ever since I can remember, we, we go through this every two years, four years. Well now I'm 80 years old now. Now I know what I know what, what we can do for our, our people, my people, Takoza anyway, they need work. We can get together and work if we get away from all these things that are written here. It's, it's not for us, it's for somebody else. This here. The Lakota people are different. We can do something for our people here at Porcupine District. We can hire an attorney to do that. We can uh, uh, create economic development here for, for Porcupine District alone. That's what I just wanted to say that because we need, we need to do something here instead of going through all this again. Get on our knees for the tribal government to help us. No. We, we, we are here first, the tribal government, the elective tribal government, they're supposed to do something for us. Tejero, uh, you know, we are, or Tejico, you know, our Lakota people here. Seem that we can't do nothing. We're POWs, prisoners of war yet. Huh. All right, so I want to thank you guys for sharing. Um, 
and totally understand um, that changes need to be made to this constitution. Um, so with that being said, oh, oh, yeah. All right. so we have another person that joined us, if you could just do um, a name and brief intro. And if you would like, you can also share something, if there's something you like or dislike of the constitution. My name is Mary Ironcloud. Um, I would like to share something. Um, I guess I'd like to share about, um, you know, there was a constitutional revision. I believe it was back in July 11, 1997. And in the, like in the judicial powers, um, it says that the separation of, of uh, what is that now? Powers. Now that never occurred, so I believe that our tribal council is breaking their own constitution all the time by that. Because back then it has here, they should have established what they were going to do back then of getting their courts together and getting their judges and every, on how they're gonna do it. But that never was done, so now they're not going by that. And then also down below it says, um, one here, um, the chief judge should be elected at large by the people and that's not being followed. So what I'm saying is, if we change these const this constitution, oh, will it be followed? And also I'd like to say, you know, Porcupine District has yeah, six communities, but now we have seven with um, the, uh, Thunder Valley. So I remember back when Rocky Ford was going to become a community and um, the district got together and they had to approve that. But it's like that has never happened. So maybe that should be like a referendum vote for the district because that's, and uh, so that, so here it says Porcupine District has six communities, but we have seven communities because uh, of that. So I would say they should have had, you know, Rocky Ford. That should have been named Rocky Ford. Um, CD, whatever they call it, until they got their uh, communities uh, approved by the district. And then, uh, what else was I? Oh, and then I, w I was really concerned about the, um, the terms. Let's see, where did I put that? Oh yeah. I would think it would be more fair if uh, they didn't go by how many people in the districts. I would think it'd be fair if they elected one representative per district. That would be the fairest thing. And then, if you open it up to, uh, open it up where we can vote for, if I, we could vote, vote for whoever we wanted to. I can say, gee, I think that guy in uh, Kyle would really be good on a council. So I would like for him to be on, I could vote for him open it up, and then do a staggered four-year term. So that, you know, every two years it changes. So that every two years you get something going good, and then you have election, and then they do away with whatever is going good for that, those two years that, that council uh, put in. So I would, I would end 
to say um, maybe uh, back in the day it was, you know, take them back to uh, like when Paul was there, he didn't get paid uh, when he first start, got into tribal council. They had a stipend and they would get mileage for whenever they attended a meeting and he had a job. So maybe we need to go back to that. And then it'll be fair. So, and then, um, what else do I have? Well, when I was talking to this, Ty's got an uncle that comes from uh, Rosebud. And they have that, uh, they open their election up. He said, it, he said it works, but the only problem was with that, that um, when that councilman serves his time, then he goes to another community and runs from that community. So, you know, that should be looked at that once they run from one community, they should be able to run from, go jump on with another community. Now I'm just looking at something different because I don't know, I, I just feel that it's not working. It's not working for anybody and it's, it's, it's just sad how, how the people in on this reservation needs help, but you know, it's, it's, it, I feel bad for the kids and so we need to do something different and maybe that's, that, that, that will change things. Sorry, but <laughs> that's the way I feel. Good. Yeah. So, so I really liked how you, um, I mean, you, you said what you disliked, but I really liked how you had a solution behind it, how you see that, how it could be different. And I think that that's important as to like why we're here. We want to see that, we all want to see that change. So I really like how you had that, those solutions behind those. Um, so with that being said, I see another new person, and I we have another um, another um, new community member here. So if you can just do a name and brief, just name brief intro. Um, right now, what they were kind of doing was uh, if there was something you like, one thing that either you like or dislike with the Constitution, and then we're going to dive into the Constitution. So you, you, you can share if you want to. If there's something you have. My name is Ben Cummings, and I'm just here to um, pay attention to the Constitution. All right, thank you. Do you, do you want to do an intro back there? <laughs> My name is Ed Arnton here in Portland Pine. I'll say good morning to everybody here. Thank you. All the People for coming and putting energy into the district and on the constitutional side there. I think it's uh, really good that they're doing this and um, I just want to share a real brief story with you. I've been watching on the national level, the Senate, they're passing, I don't know if some of you guys said, did it, but it's a tax bill. And they went way late into last night and they passed something that nobody knew about it. They had handwritten on the paper, and it was passed through. And so, I guess, I guess my point being is that, you know, ultimately we have the constitution and everything like that, but that's just a piece of paper. And if the people don't support it or really try to make things um, work, then it's just a piece of paper. And my point being, I'll just say it real briefly, what I strive, why I'm here is what I'm striving for, and it's really a tough, tough road to pull, so to speak, is but and to try to get that across to the people is that I think the reason why a lot of these things are happening the way they're happening is because there's an imbalance. We have leadership and we have stakeholders and tribal members. And until we get that to an even balance, it's always going to run like this. Legislation is going to be passed, and people are going to say, "Well, I didn't hear about that. I didn't know about that." You know, and it may be good or it may be bad. I guess I just want to say that anybody that's in an office 
that's representing people, working for the people. I would hope that they would share that information, what's going on in that particular organization, because I feel that's what's missing. You know, we have legislation and we don't know what's happening. We don't know if we're about to go off a cliff or if the waters are smooth sailing and we have nothing. So I guess that's why I just want to share that with you. And um, once again, you know, it's continue to go on and I'm really glad to see Porcupine District members here. It's a, uh, I heard a guy say it one time, he said, you know, today's going to be bad, tomorrow's going to be even worse, and the next day will be good. I think that's what's going to happen here unless, you know, to, to push this, this, um, to get this one because that document that we have, you know, as you heard, a lot of people have ideas, different ideas, how it should be, how it shouldn't be. And we have a lot of stakeholders out there, but we can only do, we can only do what we can do, you know. So, but thank you for listening and, you know, I hope you can get this straightened out because we sure do need some, we sure do need uh, to, to make things better for, you know, the young children and the people. And in closing, I just want to say that one thing to really try to build is trust. You know, just hypothetically, you know, I don't trust you, you don't trust me. You know, meaning tribal membership doesn't trust council. Council maybe don't trust tribal membership. So I guess that's what it comes down to is sitting down and discussing these things, what's going to happen, and actually have some white paper here. White paper here. Some really hard facts, information as to really what's going on. Not how I think it should be, not how you think it should be, but really what are the facts. Here it is, right here, to go by, to build on. So I think I went over about nine minutes. Thank you. Yeah, you can certainly add to I guess when I was talking about the referendum, you know, just what everybody's saying here, these issues are really major, like when it comes to, um, like, taking um, entities upon the council decision without putting it out on a referendum for the people to know what this is about also goes into the Bill of Rights. I think a lot of us um, don't even re recognize the culture and spiritual piece of um, this whole process. Um, there's a lot of disregard for elders, and I consider myself an elder today that's um, really um, wanting, carrying on what my ancestors have left for us here in Porcupine, the elders from my Teoshpai, I think of them a lot because they inspired me to stay involved, even though today I would, I'd rather be somewhere else. I came today thinking about the future of our children. And I think that's their right. We're speaking on behalf of our children too, because we aren't gonna be here, but somebody has to be here to, to um, carry on. Like we said, you know, the spirit of um, our ancestors is to maintain our land base, to maintain our culture, and the respect is the biggest thing that we lack here. And there's a lot of emphasis on education. I know that education is important. I are, we, a lot, many of us are, we have educational background degrees in, in other aspects. But to me, that's only a, a attached to what, where you're at in your capacity to service your people. It takes wisdom. A lot of people don't have common sense, though they have um, educated up the yin yang with doctorates, but they don't have the common sense to make good decisions. That's why I think referendum votes are really important to have the people's voice heard on such big issues as taking child protection services, taking the charter from the uh, public safety. In here in the Bill of Rights, we have a right to be protected. And I think that right now we're very unsafe on our roads. I'm, I, I'm fearful. And a lot of people in my district are saying that when you want, <clears throat> excuse me, when you want a police officer accessible to tell somebody there's a drunk driver, you know there's nobody to call. So those are the things under the Bill of Rights comes a lot of these other issues. So I think there's a lot of work to be done and at our district level here, 
we did start the Constitution revision, but um, we're at a stalemate right now. So how is this going to reflect on the bigger part of revision? Because our district here has started addressing a revision, but um, we're stalemate it right now. But I think it, all of these are so important. Everything is so important here. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Um, so now we'll kind of get into, it's 11 o'clock. Um, lunch will be here about noon, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll go until lunch and then we'll break for lunch. But So wherever we're at, we'll, uh, the first thing, um, we don't have the preamble in the, the PowerPoint, but I feel like that's something we, we um, that we need to, at least, at least if anybody has any comments related to the preamble, because I feel like that's something that, that we should be trying, or I, at least personally, I feel like that that needs to be more defined. So does anybody, anybody have any comments about that preamble? And, and it is on your survey too. We did get it on the survey, we just didn't get it in our PowerPoint. Anybody want to add anything to the preamble? Thank you. I think it should be more culturally driven to not look so United States government, but to look at who we are as a nation um, Oglala Sioux Tribe having some language in there that um, defines who we are rather than the basic U.S. government. Um, and it, you know, we had to do what we had to do back then, but now we have our ways, so I think that should be addressed. And put some Lakota words in here that really are of meaning to us. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't know, this might be a little strange, but I think it's good to have the recognition of the, the spiritual guidance and spirituality, but um, there are a lot of people who aren't necessarily Christian and the words uh, God Almighty and His divine providence feels Christian to me. So thank you for that. And, and we are, as you guys are saying things, we are writing them down too, so just, are you typing them too, Cots? Are you typing too? So, so anybody else have any comments on the preamble? No, not so much on the preamble, but uh, as you read Constitution of the Gauls who tried Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, then underneath that, Pine Ridge, South Dakota. So it, it, when you put Pine Ridge, South Dakota, kind of more, uh, you know, not against Pine Ridge or anything, but it, it, it uh, more or less uh, pertains to uh, Pine Ridge area and not includes uh, uh, all the other districts. So I think maybe some, some wording may, uh, could be utilized to uh, uh, not only Pine Ridge, but the rest of the reservation underneath that uh, Pine Ridge Indian Reservation heading. Thank you. All right. You know, Hey, leave Pine Ridge alone. <laughs> That's definitely something that needs to be discussed with the district. Well, um, I can't remember what site article it is, but district organizations. That, that was definitely a common thing about Pine Ridge. <laughs> um, so I really walk bombing. Just kidding. <laughs> like I said I grew up thinking I was Pine Ridge, but I found out I'm walk bombing. So. Um, so then that gets us. Uh, maybe uh, to correct what Philip was talking about, why can't we just say the Oglala Sioux Indian Reservation? Navajo says Navajo Reservation, they don't say Gallup Reservation. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Oglala Lakota? Oglala Lakota Reservation or something like that. Uh, you might have to check in to see that that's changed up and down the line, but that would be one thing we could do. Okay, so then uh, we'll get into the first article, which is uh, the territory. And I, and I do have it up here on the PowerPoint. You guys have it in front of you. Um, anybody have any um, 
recommendations or of how of what we could be adding to this or changing that you'd like to share? To me, it seems like it needs to be, like I think somebody made it or said it earlier about defining, defining better, that, and I think it was defining the jurisdiction or those boundaries, maybe me making it more defined. Anybody want to add to that or anything? Any comments? Um, so that, remember there's an article for lands? Maybe. Or maybe is that what you're saying, adding? Because there's an article for land, so maybe that's where I don't know. Maybe defining it there? I don't know. I'm just sitting through it. We have a lot of fee land within the, uh, our territory, so that's, I was just trying to point that out. Are we on territory now? I mentioned this earlier here, but I really think that we need to take a good look at what is our definition of jurisdiction versus in which territory. I again bring up the issue that surfaced and there has surfaced before in Rapid City about the tribal members living there. And uh, you know, there was a good article in the paper the other day that said that, you know, if we ever go to battle for the Black Hills territory, we always say that's our original territory. Yet we turn right around and say that those people living in Rapid are not living on our territory. And, and what's going to happen if a jury hears that? We're saying on one hand that that's our territory and then we turn around and say no it's not. So I think somebody needs to put a lot of thought into that and see what we can do with that. Because like I said before, we've got 638 contracts up there, and according to this, we have no jurisdiction up there. Or Scott's Bluff, Shattern, we have 638 contracts, and all those schools, Shattern, Scott's Bluff, Alliance, Gordon, Rushville, all of those. We've agreed that that's our territory, so we allowed the money to go over there. So what about the people living over there? tribal members vote. I mean, we'll probably get to that, but that goes along with what he's saying as well. You know, why can't we let them vote too? Yeah. Um, one thing, one thing that I, uh, when I, uh, the Native Nation Rebuilding uh, Program that I participated in, uh, they actually shared an example of, of a tribal nation that had, they actually had a representative who, those representatives that weren't on their land base, that, that was actually a part of their, um, I don't know, you want to say council rep, but they like videoed in, like they, it was written in their, their um, constitution that they would video in, and then those, those, that person represented those members that were off their land base. So just, just to share that as an example that I learned from one, um, but, but of course that goes back to like membership too, the article for membership. Um, one thing that I would like to add is um, like the to regulate, it says to regulate, but how are we going to do that? Like, it's got to be more defined. Um, that, that's just one thing like, I'd like to add to that. Um, and, and that I always go back to, even like in my expertise in like child welfare and practice standards, how important, like how if something happens, it follows, a, it's supposed to be done like this way. People having certain way of how things are done. So it's spelled out there. So you're not questioning. Like who does what and who has authority to do what. So those kind of definitions um, end up being pretty important, especially with the Constitution, I would think. Do you have something to add? Just, uh, I guess for clarification, uh, I always uh, seemed in some discussions I have, there seems to be a difference amongst our people in understanding who's in charge of what the property here. The lot of land, you know, it's, uh, it's my understanding, it's, uh, it's still under the law of the Oglala Sioux tribe, but the land is regulated by uh, a probate code or, or the um, um, CFR for the, for the BIA. In the tribal land, 
I think it's under the authority of the tribe. So when you see it right here in this bottom here, is that uh, something that we should clarify? Of, um, I did look at a, 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 a probate that was enacted in 13, I think, but I think it needs to be worked on. Uh, um, my information up to the other day was that uh, we were doing the American Indian probate uh, code is what was regulating us. Uh, I think uh, I think we should make sure the understanding is uh, into the references, the types of land. And my understanding of fee land is the Oglala Sioux tribe has no authority on that fee land. It's under this jurisdiction of the South Dakota state law. That's my understanding, but uh, maybe maybe I understand it wrong. Thanks. Uh, please uh, just also remember you got your sur survey in front of you too. So like we're taking notes here too for, for our stuff. But again, like the surveys that you guys have too will be important in filling out. Everybody ready to go on to the next one? So the next one is membership. And as you can see in the constitution, there's two sections. Section one is A and B and then section two is one sentence. So any, any input on, on the, that article? You know, this is one area that I thought have always, has always been so unclear uh, to the people. If you take a look at section one, subsection A, that's that's fairly clear. That goes and takes us back to the first membership. But you take a look at B. And I mentioned this earlier that we have so many areas in here are open to interpretation. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be one way or the other. A child is born to any member of the Galala Sioux tribe. I think we need to clarify that and say residents. You always get that, you know. Oh, you don't live here. We can't enroll your child. But this says we can't. I remember when I was trying to get my children enrolled here and I was working and went to college and, and you know, those things that are part of the tribal membership is, there was a special resolution passed years ago to, to allow those people who are away from the reservation for schooling, education, uh, <coughs> service, or employment that your children were automatically enrolled, but they never enforced that. You had to justify it and fight for it. So I think we need to clarify that, that uh, either say one, they have to be living here, or two, wherever they live is good. So it, it's quite confusing the way it is now. And I can interpret it one way and somebody can interpret it another way and we're not any place. Anyone else? Yeah, you look at the, uh, look at the uh, membership of the Oglasu tribe, the constitution. Anybody lives here is a member of the tribe. That's it. And you could be black, purple, whatever. It's a membership. Just a corporation, the Oglasu tribe. It's all about the city. Is the blood quantum? goes with membership. Do we go by lineage or do we go by um, um, the degree of, of your pedigree? <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. And, and, again, and again, that's not defined either. So again, that's something like if you feel like, if you feel like that's something that should be, then make sure you're writing it on your paper. We're definitely like taking note over there too as well. Any other comments? So then that takes us to Article 3. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get it up here. I just, I, there's 10 sections, and this is the governing body. So if you guys wanted to take a look at, we'll go to first to Section 1. 
Oh yeah, I'm trying on membership. I, I didn't see it anywhere in here, but there's a lot to talk about membership. From time to time, I always listen to the council and always hear where somebody gave up their tribal membership to go join another tribe. I think we should have something in here that that gives what is our tribe's authority in that process. Because there was nothing in there that allows our council to give up someone's tribal membership, not in our constitution. I think we need to put a section in there that how does that work? Are you keeping up over there? Sorry. <laughs> if you're, um, just do, um, Tama, she's also taking notes too. So we don't need to like get every, every word. It's just, okay. <laughs> All right. What is the address of the that's a treaty. So there, in the, um, there isn't any definition like quantum, above quantum, but it's in, isn't it like in an ordinance or something? Yeah. Yeah. It's not in there. Yeah. So it's definitely like something like, do you think we should have it, or do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think here where it says the Tribal Council shall propose bylaws covering future membership and adoption of new members, I think that's where that one third and that, that comes yeah, up there. It's, it's, yeah. and, and, uh, so, and, so it's Tribal Council determining that authority. So what do you, that, I mean, you think that's something we need to be looking at and... Kota, by my background, even though you might be 60 over 60, 126 or whatever, you know, <laughs> you know, you're tied to somebody, one of your grandfathers who was a full blood. I mean, I look at a, I, I look at those things like that, and it's the rights of people who want to be Lakota. That's, that's kind of a difficult question was who establishes a one-fourth? That's a tribal decision. Uh, they decide what do you consider a tribal member? One-fourth, one-half, one-sixteenth, one-one-hundred-sixty-fourth, that's a tribal decision to do. But there was some confusion when, when 95561 passed uh, school law which says you have to be a member of the tribe in order to get counted for school funding. But the way that was resolved was if you are an enrolled member, it doesn't matter what, the federal government says you're an Indian if you're one fourth. But uh, the law says that's a tribal decision. If the tribe says you're a tribal member, you have one 186 degree of Indian blood. If they say yes, you're a tribal member. So that's a tribal decision. Thank you for that clarification. So it can be changed. Um, it can be changed, yes. Um, one, one thing too, I think uh, uh, that this tribe, um, they, don't, they don't include, like let's say if you're enrolled this tribe and you include um, Rosebud, I don't think they include both tribes. They only include like the blood quantum from this tribe. Yeah, that's that again is up to the tribe. And that's Some up to tribe the tribe. tribe. So more defined membership. Yeah. All right, so are we ready to move on to governing bodies? Anybody want to kick that one off? That first section, we could just start with section one. So the governing body of the tribe <coughs> under this constitution shall be a council which shall be comprised of council men chosen by 
secret ballot by qualified voters of the tribe, which council shall hereafter be known as the Ogallala Sioux Tribe Council. Looks like tribal council. Huh? This was mentioned before here this morning about the boundaries. I think until that boundary issue is clarified, that's always going to, in my mind, put that governing body under this constitution shall be. That's always going to be subject to question. So I think one of the things that has to happen, it's all okay to put in here shall describe boundaries, but we're not doing that. So somebody in Porcupine could probably run from Ogallala. You see, it's, it's, it's the, one, the reservation is one bigger boundary. Maybe we need to look at uh, uh, council members at large, and not tie them to one district. We get district-itis when we do that. We don't look at the whole council, the whole tribe. The treaty, the one that we had at the casino, that was one of the solutions that one, one person did bring up about the one per, and then also that eliminating, you know, more funds for other purposes, or, you know, putting somewhere else. So that was some, some com one comment that was made. Um, anybody else? At least I can speak for our district, um, me being a former councilwoman, the two never work together. We're never on the same page, right, Philip? We hardly have, we have one councilman going this way. I'm, I'm not using him saying that he's, but you know, they should be working to, the other council representatives should be working closely to develop our district, to um, have um, what, we're, what Mr. Tail was saying here, to um, create, you know, more opportunity for um, development for buildings, we need a new cap office, we need a lot of things here. But, and I myself had that experience. I, I could never get to the table with the other one because we, for reasons are the other, I guess it's just a political thing. Thank you. There's, there's one other, I got a question on section five, page three. I, I'm assuming that meant when the first tribal council was held after the 1934. <coughs> Maybe we don't really need that in there anymore, where it's determined by the superintendent. You know, I think we can get rid of most of that and just have the last sentence shall be termed by the district or something. But I think we need to look at that. That's no longer needed because that was. That was a specific determiner of it. And and one other question I have on the next one, section six. It talks about the secretary and treasurer, and it reads, uh, treasurer and such other offices may be dis deemed necessarily elected from the tribal council from within or outside of their own membership. I think we need to clarify that. That means, tell me that if we wanted to, we can elect Jackie back here as our treasurer or secretary. And I don't think we're doing that. And the other one I have a question on is when we get a secretary treasurer, in my mind, these are not elected officials. Elected officials in the definition is elected by the whole tribal membership. These are selected officials, selected by the tribal council. And they should not be termed an elected official, be secretary, treasurer, or fifth member. They're selected. The people have no choice in who those are. No, no I don't, what I'm saying is, is if that's the way they're going to do it, they shouldn't call them elected members because elected members, that's when the, the membership body elects them. These are selected by 19 people or 20 people. 
They should be called selected officials, not elected officials. That in my mind, and I don't have much of a mind, so. I guess uh, in the first meeting I did uh, talk about that, uh, that one um, position where it says within, but the, the, of what I hear uh, for a number of years is uh, that that position should be elected at large. And maybe the treasurer with some qualifications that could run that. I know we spend huge amounts of money on CPAs, you know, huge amount. And they basically almost run run our uh, our uh, finance offices. But uh, I think that uh, would be a really uh, something for the benefit of the people that they can cast their vote for them positions. So, thank you. And then... We'll go back to uh, article section four. You know, since we're... Uh, our population is increasing. I think maybe for 1,000, we should uh, put it up to either 15 or 2,000. So the minimum would be uh, 1,001 instead of 500. One. <laughs> but and then Mary says one. And so that, those are the considerations that can be put in place. I think in that area there, this is one of the sections that I think you need to look at because anytime you put figures in a, in a bylaws, board of directors, or, or bylaws, you're stuck with those. We can very easily word that, we'll say that the pro, uh, each recognized district shall elect representatives to the tribal council in proportion of the tribal membership. And we're not stuck with 1,000 because we're stuck with that when we put it in here. You need to word it so that it gives some flexibility so that it can be changed over time. You shouldn't put numbers in these things. And another one that I think, I don't know what the other districts are saying about this, but I think, and it probably will never happen, I think we need to consider uh, staggered terms and possibly even term limits. But if we're going to do it, now's the time to do it. Any other comments on that section? We're on Article 3, the governing body. So there's 10 sections. Anything else? Anybody else want to add anything more to any of those sections? Or any? Okay. You know, I really find it, I don't know what the word would be. My phone's disagreed with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. We're, 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 we're working it out, though. We're working it out. But, you know, I really, you know, prior to, like, you know, Tom Phillip, you know, is, is, is my brother in law, but he's also my council man. And I think, you know, I think, really think it's, it's um, the work that really needs to be done is to not really look so much at changing what things are in the future, but look at what we have right now. You know, look at where, where our strengths and our, our, our weaknesses are because our council people, they'll, they'll go vote. You know, they'll go vote, but we don't know who voted for what. You know, I mean, this is not nothing against our, our council, our council, but I just heard from a rumor, I should say that, but, that our, one of our councilmen voted against this process of the Constitution. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, but at least we know where people stand. You know, because those are the specific things that I think are really missing from this, this whole process is that the, the information that, that's out there, you know, that, that people have, that it's really, um, we don't know. You know, in closing, just say, 
Like, we're going to have a council meeting in a couple weeks, a month. We have no idea what that legislation is. And I go to council, I go to committee meetings and, you know, fill up the test to that. I encourage those, con those councilmen and those, those committee chairs to, to start working on this process that we're talking about now, which is get up and share this information as to really what's going on in, in, in um, land, health, public safety. You go around this reservation, all each one of those uh, topics, people have concerns about it. But we never hear from those people that are making legislation on that. And until we get, until, lack of a better word, the tail's wagging the dog, until we get our, our, our membership, our, our leadership to sit down and let's start working together, this, we could have the best document here, but what part of the, the membership would be the legislators will not up, up, uh, uphold it, they will not promote it, they won't support it. You know, so that's, I think that's really where we really need to work when we talk about membership, is really get, get down to the brass tacks and see what's going on. You know, we passed a, uh, at our last district meeting, we passed some, did some, uh, a resolution to try to help that process along. So I want to know down the road where, where that's at and if our council will support that, you know. But then again, it's a time and place for everything, but I think that's what's really, uh, we really need is um, to have our, 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 our leadership tell us what's going on, you know, and sorry about that if uh, I'm beating that same drum over and over, but that to me that's really, I really believe that until we have that, it's not going to work. I mean, it's not. These things are going to, are going to, as as it is, spiral out, which they already have. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I'd like to say, like just based off what you're saying, so a disconnect, um, and maybe a solution to that could be um, in in the section or an article for the oath of office or either there will be some, um, maybe they say, I will be at district meetings, well, however, however often they have district meetings, I'm not sure. Um, but somehow saying in the oath of office, they're speaking those words, like they will commit to being there. I don't know, I'm just thinking of a solution to, to that disconnect that I'm hearing about. Well, we've done that at the last district meeting, and we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, we have our leadership here, we have our council, we'll see how that meshed and how that works and the people together, so we'll yeah. see. I just wanted to say while we have the pitch in there thrown in, um, we did do some constitution revision <coughs> amendments more and we're kind of at a stalemate at the district level because of um, not understanding, you know, again, like the disconnect of communication. So some people are, are saying no and you know, and those of us that are aware, but because we did it with Pat Lee, you know, he was a very in, informational, good uh, attorney who helped us. And he said, the more you put into, a, into your um, constitutions, he said, um, a revision, you get more interpretation. So trying to tone that down to looking so it reflects, I think we're a step ahead of, the, of this process. So, you know, whether or not it'll be passed when it's presented to, to the council, because they may not say, they may say disagree because it doesn't coincide with that is I think when we pass ordinances, they bring an ordinance to the council, and it's unfair to the council members who are not very familiar with that to have to pass it the same day in which what they end up doing. When I was working for the tribe, I wrote a, an ordinance, showed it to several council members, nobody liked it, but I put in there that any ordinance brought before the council had to go back to the people for 60 days. And it was a district representative's job to take it back to the people, meet with the people, and bring their comments back to the council before it was passed. There's no reason why we have to pass an ordinance the same day as presented to the council or a resolution. I think it comes back to the people and they have their comments and then you take it back to the council. Uh, it just... Uh, you know, a lot of municipalities have a first reading, a second reading, and a third reading. 
because you know we pass ordinances all the time and we never enforce them anyway and maybe that way the people will know what the ordinance is maybe we'll have some say on whether it's been enforced or not but I agree the buzz is that uh, communications is, is needs to be improved to that point to see what's happening and I still have that ordinance I don't know if there's anyone from Oglala here besides me, but uh, I wanted to make reference to some of our old leadership that left, you know, Stanley, uh, looking out, and Gerald, you know, it's uh, fairly close to them guys, and uh, some of the older people, the two bulls is that, uh, <laughs> but um, I don't know when in our government that uh, they made these districts and how they got limited like that outside their controversy between the Wakpamity and Pine Ridge. But I understand and understood from Mr. One Feather that the Oglala Junior community and the Red Shirt Table community were recognized districts by the United States Constitution. And uh, I don't know if it's my district's desire to reinvestigate that but uh, I wanted to say that for the record I do know some of the older people my dad included uh, talked about that so if anybody has information about that in a process um, Richard really became developed since the 90s you know and the people like we're talking about children it's got some hard surface roads and it's got good water and it's got scenery and it's got tourism potential and maybe they need their own. Same as the district, uh, the Oglala Junior, you know, that's a young man afraid of his horse uh, area. So I just wanted to say that for my district. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to add to that article? I'm looking at uh, subsection A. It says the council has authority to negotiate with the federal, state, and local governments on behalf of the tribe and to advise and consult with the representatives of the Interior Department. I think we need to change that Interior Department to the federal government because uh, now the federal government, the tribe has that authority to deal with all federal governments all federal agencies, so if we'd say with the representatives of the federal government on all, activi on all acti activities of the federal agencies that may affect the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. At one time it was appropriate to say the Interior Department because that's about the only one we dealt with, but now we have contracted with a lot of federal agencies so that I think we just change it to federal government. And we might want to put something similar to that to the state or any other governmental agency or organization that may affect the Pine Ridge Reservation. And as long as I got this, I'm going to go down to a couple others here. Hey. So he's, he's on Article 4, the powers of the council. So just, well, you're okay. I think we were ready to jump to the next one, so, oh, whatever. Really? Okay, sorry. Sorry, so we have one more comment for the last Article 3, and then we'll go to Article 4. Then we'll give it to you, okay? Sorry. Uh, I guess for me, it would be talking about the Section 9 out of there. We're still on Article 3. Article 3 on governing body, but it talks about, on Section 9, it talks about elections. Um, and our elections are usually held 60 days before the election, which is very short term, unlike the natural elections, which you petition to run for office uh, a year in advance um, for such positions um, of stature relating to um, sitting on a seat that involves a lot of um, knowledge and body um, for a position, um, 60 days 
uh, before election is very short term because like the elections that have been held, you can take out a petition um, up until the last day as long as it's returned and be on the ballot, a certified ballot um, before the, um, what it's called, primary? Before the primary um, and basically go unnoticed. Um, and I noted that I noticed that in this last election um, for people who are running for presidents, um, we have a lot of people who, even council people who um, take out the petitions at the last minute and jump on the ballot. And so there's never no there's never no awareness, never no information, never no like um, prom you know promoting or advertising that you're running for such a seat. So the election process um, for section nine. Just like, like she's been talking about, needs more clarification and probably a, 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 a timeline that's expanded more for uh, an ability for, um, what do you call it when you go around and, um, advertise yourself, what do you call it, um, campaign. campaign, yeah, for campaigning because, uh, you know, you can just go off a whim of filling out an application and be on a ballot. You know, as long as you have no felonies, you're basically certifiable. But if you uh, don't campaign, expressing your platforms and you know what you really want to address, uh, what you want to do as, for these seats is is the key part because you know you, you, we're, we're we're dealing with a time that's different from 1934 to now. We're more in a, in a modernized uh, um, system of of Western thought, but also being able to, um, you know, uh, integrate and, uh, and adapt, you know, um, cultural ways, but getting to know somebody is, is key for, for putting them in, in positions of, 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 of power or putting them in positions of legislative bodies. So, I mean, that's, that's a real big issue that came, came about um, through the, um, I keep forgetting, there was this, the young board of council from a couple of years ago um, who addressed the issue and, and that was the ball dropper for them was like, well, if you don't know who's running, then w w what does it matter if we have an election process? Because I told them I could take out a petition at the very last minute and be on the, and be on the, and be on the ballot. Um, so the key, the key thing is the election process. Because um, this one says 60 days, and it should be um, far, far more days than that for the campaign process. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Any more on that Article Three? I think that goes to the Election Commission that's established by the Tribal Council too, right? And selected, I think, to give more, um, like you're saying, to kind of regulate how we do our elections from our district, we should have a represent, representative from each district on the commission to um, help with that rather than, I, I, I'm just gonna give you an example of why I'm saying this. I was listening to when they were selecting the election commission from the council floor last, last term, they were really buttering up some of the council. You know, you were really good at, you were you know, kind of like campaigning for herself, you know? So I think as our district, we know the people who can really be astute and you know have some integrity to run beyond this commission that's a big position so i would i think that we should give some of that leeway back to the districts to have a representative from each one to sit on that commission so it's we can go into maybe setting up what nick is saying about a year in advance to um campaign <laughs> or letting people know who you are Um, there's also one in here, Section 7. Um, what is that? The election of the Tribal Council here under shall be called and supervised by the Secretary of the Interior or such persons as he may appoint. Now, that's not, that's not happening. <laughs> so, it, it's a totally different thing. They have uh, a commission. Seven. 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 So all that time they were having these election <laughs> committees and... They were supposed to be supervised by the Secretary of the Interior, but now we have the commission, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, it says who they appoint. Yeah. 
So they're probably disappointing. <laughs> I'm just assuming. <laughs> I, I think that goes back to uh, something else in here. You know, it says the first election. Now we have keep in mind this constitution was written right after we first got and. So a lot of these things are no longer pertinent here, like the first election, that happened years ago. And it shouldn't even be a part of this now. Yeah, good, good point, very good point there. Um, any more for section three, then, then I'll give it back for section four. Yeah, one more for section three. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about elections. You know, I ran for the Porcupine District twice and won twice, and each time they go, somebody goes and appeals it. They go to the courthouse and it shuts everything down. And I come to find later that, you know, later on that the only person that could hear that is the Supreme Court. And then, but I guess so my point being is, you know, that's an example of, you know, People take a lot of time and energy and put it into it, but then when, when things are so, uh, what's the word, ambiguous, you know, people, it's, it's really hard to do business around here. And that's what, you know, that's what, um, you know, just like uh, Bob was saying, you know, that's, you know, that, take that out, you know, or, or, or do something with it because these laws that we're talking about, uh, you know that are affecting people. I mean, it, to me, it's almost like people don't even really care about it because, I mean, once again, it's almost like we don't even we don't even matter. The membership don't even really matter. Our children don't even really matter because how you know we get treated and granted, you know, it goes both ways. But if, like in Porcupine District here, support our our our, our council people elected leaders will also hold their feet to the fire. That's not happening. And that's why we're having the, this problem here, you know. General Philip, you know, he's, I'm glad he comes to the meetings, you know, and he hears it, and that's all we want to be heard. And now we're moving to, or let's see something concrete, black and white, and back, factual, you know, moving that way. But that's all I wanted to say about that, because it's really, I mean, this, it's really hard to, um, you know, try to find out what's going on and we have to chase our people around and we hear about a law, you know. What, two more minutes here, people. Public safety, the charter got pulled. And my question is, why did it get pulled? Where can I, as a tribal member, go and say, legislators, why did you guys pull public safety? And so here is, a, I might get a paper and say, the reason why we did that was this, this, and this. Okay, I know. No, I know, but that's not even happening. And as a, as a result, the membership, the, the, the people feel unsafe. You know, a lot of crime gets out of hand. But once again, people, I hope you, for those of you that are watching, you know, for those of you that are around is talk, ask your tribal leadership what's going on. Why are the decisions you're making, are they good or bad? And, and not have to chase them around, you know? But that, I'm really, you know, I think that's really a bad business practice where decisions are made and it's almost like I said, they don't even care about the membership. People don't even, it's almost like next week we're going to have a council meeting. They're going to have a stack of papers this tall <coughs> and not one, not one, no information coming back to our district office. And so I might be the only one saying that. I don't know, maybe you guys will feel like that too and, and step up and, and um, in your own way and help our council and let's get this information out there because it's, we're just spinning our wheels and we have been for years. Um, well, as we just mentioned, I mentioned that earlier about going back to the referendum on the decisions you're talking about that the council make is to put it on a referendum. The council can do that at least one third of the, according to the constitution members can say, you know what, we want a referendum vote. And I think right now is a good time to address them because we have two here to say, you know, why did we make that decision? What was this about? Because sometimes you just go with the flow 
not knowing the um, the inside infrastructural stuff that you know could be changed within their own structure. So that could be an, a, a referendum vote saying, did the people want to see public safety dismantled like that? So uh, that's that's what I addressed earlier. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely, definitely an, um, an option to consider on, on decision making that tribal council reps do make for our people, or you know, the decisions how they, how tribal council does that. Um, if you can go and do like just your name, Maggie, and like just where you're from. Just a little brief in, in, intro, and we're on section, our article three of the constitution. Hi, um, I'm Maggie Ross. I'm from the Oblaya community. Uh, I totally spaced this out. I was busy fixing a vacuum cleaner all morning. So, anyways. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Article three. Um, so we have like 15 <laughs> minutes for 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 noon. Are you guys okay with getting Article 4 started, or do you guys need to take a break? Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, or, or do you guys want to start off with Article 4? All right, okay. Well, I'm going to give it back to you because you had a bunch of highlights. <laughs> Article 4 now? Yeah. I, I just have a question, maybe, of the two council representatives we have here. <laughs> Section one, subparagraph F. It says the tribe has authority to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Galala Sioux tribe in accordance with terms of a, of a charter that may be issued to the tribe by the federal government. I don't know what that means. You know, uh, I don't... Uh, I don't know if we ever have. I don't know if we have existing charters that we got from the federal government or not. You know, there was at one time uh, tribes, tribes and tribal organizations, if they were going to contract a program by the federal government, they had to be a chartered organization. And Lone Man School became a chartered organization because they wanted to run a school, but when 638 came in, that did away with that. That meant the tribes no longer need to be chartered organizations because 638 gave them the authority to contract with the federal government. And I don't know if that's what it's referring to or not, but I think it needs to be reviewed and it's no longer pertinent, we, we get rid of it. Now, I've got another one under G. And this comes up with, I mentioned earlier, maybe we need to think about some definitions because to appropriate a public pur for public purposes of the tribe, any available tribal council funds. What do we mean by tribal council funds? I've been to district meetings where somebody inevitably gets up and says, that's our money. I'm assuming this tribal funds means the, the funds that are generated from the leases and, and that. What do they call those, Philip? Uh, general funds? General funds? Because every dollar that comes to the tribe from the federal government is restricted funds, and you can't use it for everything else. Give you an example. We get money each year from the, higher, from the tribal government for higher education. Now I can sit here and say those are our funds because they come to, in, for the purpose of the tribal members, but, it's only if you're going to go to school you get those funds. You're not entitled to them just because you're a tribal member. So I think we need to clarify that in this document. What do we mean by tribal funds, general funds? What do we mean by restricted funds? Because we operate, most of our money we operate with are restricted funds. So I think we need to clarify that. And H to levy taxes or license fees upon, upon persons of the Indian reservation. You know, a good example of this is a 2% law, work, right to work law. It's always been questioned, does the tribe have the authority to, to levy that against non-Indians on, on the reservation? And it still has not been settled. 
is still up in the air. There, I think we had nine or ten different ordinances and resolutions on that particular issue alone, the 2%. So I think we need to look at who, who do we really have the authority to do this to? And while I have the mic, I have one more. Well, I'll just quit after this one. Uh, I, to remove trespassers and exclude and banish persons from within the boundaries of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation as defined in Article 1. This is in a conflict a little bit if you take a look at the Tribal Law Code. It's conflicting with this because in the Tribal Law Code it does say about the same thing but there's an exception to it. It says, except for those people who are on the reservation to enforce a federal law, a federal program. Give you an example. Several years ago, we ran off a superintendent and one of the administrators at Wombly School. We banished them. That was illegal because they were there to enforce public law 10297. And it says that in the tribal code. I think you need to look at the tribal code and work it in together with this one here. I'll give somebody else a chance. I have some more, but I tend to hog the mic. It's not any. I think I have a. Um a supporting voice in um, trying to um, clarify this 2%. Is it a law or is it a, they say it's ordinance of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe, but then they also call it a tax. So that's been the question for many of our, um, our schools who um, put into that 2% and 1% goes into the Tribal Education Agency. However, it's not fair. It's not a fair tax. So if you are going to call it a tax, it needs to go to IHS, has to go to the county schools, and it has to go to the bureau. Nobody's exempt from it. But they're doing that to our own tribal membership. So I think that really has to be clarified. Constitution, like we, they, they're supposed to be written so that it doesn't question things. So that's telling you that it needs to be more defined and, and clarified. I mean, and then that's where constitutions, like they should be written to be able to understand. So. And I think um, some of our problem arises in Article 1 and Article 2. You guys probably already talked about that. But when we're defining our territory and when we're defining, defining membership, so our constitution then only applies to um, membership. So I think that's where um, most attorneys that advise the tribe and advise the state say that we don't have the authority to tax non-members because our constitution um, gives this guideline of, of membership. And so um, the US constitution talks about um, taxation without representation, that you can't do that. So um, I think that becomes a challenge here when we're talking about our constitution because we have a lot of non-members, um, not just being non-Indian, but non-tribal members. They're from a different tribe that are here. And so Supreme Court rulings have ruled in that, um, in that manner. But I, um, I wanted to say that on that 2% um, tax because uh, Shannon County or the public school, um, they hire 
who controls who gets hired there is mostly the teacher union. And who sits on the teacher union a good amount of time is non-Indian teachers who are from Gordon, from Shadron, from Rushville, from Hill City, from Custer, from Rapid City. And um, when this 2% thing was first brought up, um, the county was actually willing to do a negotiation and use American Horses model and how they do the 2% to pay into the tribe. Um, but none of them wanted to do that. And so then there was a few of us as teachers that were making the argument that not one of you guys are investing even in our community, but you're taking money from our community. And you're taking that and you're, you're investing it back into your own community. So Custer gets to thrive off of Indian money, even though they don't like Indians. Rapid City gets to thrive off of Indian money when they don't like Indians. And so um, that was a, a big thing. And so I think when you look at the Constitution, um, it, should, it should say that. Uh, the other thing that I um, did want to say, um, from my own experience working in constitutional revision, I think that the first, very first step that has to occur, and Uncle Philip will, probably will agree with me because he, when I was on the um, task force back in 2000, um, he supported our efforts. And um, once you do all of this and you go back to council, you're gonna have to have two thirds support of that council to make any kind of change. And so if you're gonna make provisions in here that say that um, one, one council per district, maybe not all of them wanna agree with that. And so you're gonna get a stalwart there. I think that uh, one of the first, or just this is from my own experience, um, is that the tribe, maybe Philip and Jackie could um, go back and work on a petition ordinance and um, put that petition ordinance through the council. And then they should also, in the process, call for um, a two-thirds ref referendum or constitutional revision to take the superintendent out of this process. And then once you do that, then the people at least have a chance of being successful in changing this document. So I think that, um, just from my own experience, uh, all the things that I've ran into, the roadblocks, because I did the same thing. I was sitting in um, all the communities, uh, gathering information, and, um, and it just it got stopped at council. And then at the time, um, Bob Ekafi was our superintendent, and he, would, he, when it came to the signature process of doing it through the 25 CFR, he said that we had to have 6,000 signatures. And um, he wouldn't acknowledge the process what the law says, and the Bureau wouldn't acknowledge that process either, because the Bureau's law says you only need 30% um, uh, of the signatures of the people that voted in the last election. And so um, that was a, a big contentious, and we couldn't ever get it resolved off that, and we couldn't move it any further into tribal council, so it just kind of died. And so if um, you guys are gonna try to do this, um, I think that should be, I mean, as you're going and doing this, but you should um, be taking something already to council saying that you want it, that should be your first election. Once you remove them, then you can bring forward all your changes, because if you don't do it, um, I can guarantee, I could probably even name the council people that are gonna block you, so. Thank, thank you for that information. Um, something very important to think about. Um, so with that, I think it's a good time to break for lunch because our lunch is here. And we asked if you could say a meal prayer for us.
same time. Something new there. The N word? Okay. I'm on, I have a long time past. Okay, so if you guys want to eat, you want to reach your plates and then you guys just then we'll come back at it. We'll all be eating and stuff in our face. <laughs> um we are here till four. Just just wanted to let you guys know to try and get through these articles. But keep in mind, um, if we can try and get through all 17 articles with some input, but also keep in mind that you do have that survey as well. If there's something you didn't touch on, that you can always get that survey completed and turned in. Any, any, anybody else have any questions on article four? Regarding the trespassers, remove trespassers and exclude and banish persons. I think um, with the two council reps here, looking at, remember pup, um, the council uh, made an ordinance to remove meth users? You know, that is something has it been enforced judicially and lawfully. So I think, um, again, like, um, my brother-in-law said, you know, when you um, make a law, then you just make them the day and then forget about them. So those are things that as a district, we, re we need to be feel like we're safe from, <coughs> from these um, meth people and uh, just we need to have safety in our district. And the drug dealers and the bootleggers, that's all part of that. So uh, that's something to think about. We want to hear from you guys. <laughs> suggestion that I have for this constitution is that if, if the committee or whoever the people that are working on this closely is to have our, our, our lawyers take each one of these and define them what it means because once again we, we're here and we're asking about what is the, define, uh, what is the definition of uh, banishment what is the definition of trespasser you know really there's it's really I don't know I think it's we have the resources we have the manpower the woman power we have the lawyers okay put this together and have us uh, just a one sheet okay this is what it means because people yeah def, what does that definitely mean because this is from 1934 and we're still going by it you know and we're still going to continue to go by it until there's enough support for people to say hey let's change this and, and so I would say, take it word for word, our lawyers or any, anybody, lawyer, their background or people would like to do that, which has happened years, to what, what exactly does that mean? Because this is really foreign to us as, as a people. There's people that only understand Lakota, they don't understand this. And there's people in our community that are really, and I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't have a law background. And, a lot of this stuff, there's a lot of questions, but once again, we have all these uh, these questions, but who's here in the lawyer? Who's Who has the ability to tell us, yeah, what these, these mean? You know, that's, that's, our, that's our situation there. So I just want to ask that, if you would uh, promote that, and ask our lawyer, I mean, our attorneys to put some energy into this, you know, make it. I, I will add that um, that is not the first time that that has been brought up. Um, other constitutions that I have seen, there there is like a definitions, and it's more than one page. It ends up being like three pages or something, but but definitely needed. Um, so totally understand that one. So I had some questions on um, under under Article Four, like it talks about um, the powers of the council. But there's provisions that are like 
um, repetitive. So um, like F and S are kind of repetitive because they're talking about uh, the same kind of developing organizations and, and um, uh, developing policy or whatever in regards to those organizations. Um, one of the things that I um, was really interested in though was this uh, N, to regulate, preserve, and strengthen native arts, crafts, culture, and the Lakota language. Is that like a constitutional thing? I mean, does that need to be um, something that's in, in the Constitution? Um, the other thing was um, you. So the count. So this is, and we were talking about this uh, over break. That um, the last election in 2008. The people voted um, to enact or to amend the Constitution to put this U in place to adopt ordinances regulating the procedure of the council itself and of other eth elected officials on, of the reservation through a comprehensive code of ethics <coughs> and removal procedures. Uh, if I remember correctly, the last um, effort that was made with the ethics ordinance it didn't say anything in regards to other elected boards or districts or anything. It just, um, it was an ordinance that was just specifically used for, to um, keep tribal council ethical. And I really think that if, if that's gonna be in place, that all boards, everybody needs to be practicing ethically. And um, there has to be a provision that allows for people to remove other people. But that's just on ethics, and so then you'd end up having to skip all the way to um, Article 8, removal of officers, um, where that would need to be amended. But in this process here, um, whatever the council is um, proposing to enact with their ethics ordinance, it needs to include school boards, it needs to include, um, like we used to have a public safety board, you know, all of that, there has to be a provision um, and then what is the role of our districts, our district government? So how do, um, does this oversee that or is it just something that oversees um, tribal council itself? Because the way this was worded, Jesus, um, it talks about every elected position on this reservation. Excuse me, I'll be leaving here a little bit, but I have one comment from an uh, uh, individual, like Tanashi from uh, California, and he said, we need to put this on ballot, whether we have IRA or treaty council. Yeah. That's different. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I wanted to bring, bring that up. He's not right in I also had a concern on, on the subsection N where it says to regulate. What do we mean by regulate? How are we going to regulate arts and crafts, culture, language? Now keep in mind anything we put in here we're going to have to do or violate in the Constitution in itself. So I think some of these here really need to have a good, take a real good look at it. And I agree with what Buzz said that we need to go through so many of these things, there's definitions that are going to leave everything up to interpretation. And I think uh, a definition list is ideal. Now on, on subsection O, it says to charter subordinate organizations for economic purposes. What about for educational purposes? What about for other purposes? See, it needs to be, just, if you just don't get so specific and say economic, you can say to charter subordinate organizations for the betterment of or what, or something like that. And also, this was written way before there were contracts and charters. And I question whether the tribe, when they charter an organization, 
I don't believe they really have the authority to regulate the activities of that association. They can ensure that they're following the, their own bylaws and, and procedures, but I don't know if they can regulate, because that's the purpose of a charter in the first place. And another one is Q. What do we mean to regulate the domestic relations of members of the tribe? Do you regulate who I marry? You know, what, what do we mean there? And, and uh, I, I kind of also agree with, I agree with what Maggie said about the ethics. I think they should apply it. And again, going back to remember when this was written, we didn't have school boards. We didn't have gaming commission boards and all of those boards, but we now have them. And I think they should be held to the same standards as we're trying to hold our council officials to, in, as far as ethics are concerned. And the same way, I know it probably comes up somewhere in here, the qualifications, so I'll wait until that happens. Thank you. All right, any more comments on section four, um, section one, two, or three? Today, as I'm sitting here through these hours, what can we do, and I think Buzz mentioned that before, is what, what, what are we into now, today? What are we facing? What are some of the changes we could make? I think it's um, that ethics board that's been pondered on um, by the council. Have they actually placed that? Could we do that today? Not, I mean, not literally today, but you know, in this era of before the council, the, this um, council ends, the ethics and um, also looking at, um, uh, I was just looking at the, um, the ordinances that we talked about earlier. What can we do to enforce them now? Because they're an ordinance now. That could kind of give us the guide of what we want in here, what is, what is really necessary to have in here. You know, um, they, they took the step by creating an ordinance to do the removal of you know unwanted people who are not doing good things on the res, that could be enforced. I mean, you know, and along with um, public safety, you know, how are we working with them to um, see that there's regulatory um, procedures followed with the uh, with the bootleggers and you know, we we really need to, um, I guess, see some data thus far on how we are working, do an assessment of our own ordinances, how we enforce them, and how are we, um, I guess, how we made them, but how are they being enforced, is what I'm saying, today. Those are the two things I hear over and over is, you know, we made an ordinance for this, we made an ordinance for that, and we're gonna really deal with meth users, and we're gonna really deal with, um, generally not just the organization of public safety, but myself as a member of public safety. How safe do I feel? So that's, that's something I think we could really trail along with, um, with our council to see what they can do between now and the time their term is coming up. Okay, any, anything more on that section or that article four? Okay, so, maybe, so we'll, we'll go to, remember, keep in mind we have 17 sections to get to. Keep in mind. So we're on article or Article Five, the judicial powers. Anybody wanna? I think there's how, oh, what, uh, seven sections there. Any input that anybody would like to to put for that article? Yeah, article. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at page seven, uh, subsection C. It says, Justice of the Supreme Court must have a Juris Doctorate from an ABA accredited law school and must be licensed to practice law in any state. I think we should certainly make sure it's South Dakota. We live in South Dakota. And 
the other one, I, I, I know this is quite an issue at one time, I don't know how it is now, but subsection D. The chief judge of inferior courts shall be elected by large by eligible voters of the tribe under ordinance promulgated by the tribal council and shall serve for four terms. I think I interpret that as meaning that we, elected, we elect the chief judge by vote. And you go down to removal. Uh, and it doesn't say anything in here that I can find, maybe I didn't read it close enough, that the council has any authority to remove a tribal chief judge. They can remove the Supreme Court judges and the inferior court judges, but that has happened. Makes no sense when, makes no sense when the people elect a chief judge and two weeks after the new council comes in, they fire that judge and hire their own. I think we need to look at how, to, what does this really mean? And, uh, I had one more here, but I think uh, section 4D. Just to get, bear with me, I had one here that I need to refer back to section 4. That's, I'm looking at different one. Um, under section 4 um, C that um, it's just a concern that I have about you know we were talking um, my uncle was talking about the remove how they removed the chief judge but also like the council needs to really understand what that section reads there because the chief judge is responsible for administering the courthouse. <clears throat> that duty, according to the Constitution, falls to the chief judge. It doesn't fall to the court administrator. And so there's this continuous thing that's occurring in our tribal court where our, court, our judges are getting removed or dismissed or whatever because your, court, your tribal council is interfering through the administrator. And I think that needs to be um, clarified. And maybe, um, in, I don't, um, there should be a provision in here that talks about what is the role, because um, it says that the Supreme Court can do this, this, and that, but it doesn't even um, say like how, how, like our Supreme Court, they're, a lot of times they're not even tribal members. And they, they're acting in conflicts. So we had a Supreme Court um, justice that um, got appointed by counsel from Standing Rock and um, wasn't recusing himself over different issues um, because I guess nobody knows he's from Standing Rock and um, that Standing Rock people and Oglala Sioux tribal people are related and sometimes have conflicts. And so those things are happening. Um, I think that there needs to be a provision in our um, in the court section that identifies who and how our justices are appointed or elected. If they're appointed, is it a lifetime appointment or is it uh, for four years, five years, six years, ten years? Um, and then the same thing about the chief judge. So for a long time, I remember um, the chief judge, um, there was a, a, a court process. So if a lower judge uh, made a ruling, um, a person appealed it to the chief judge, and the chief judge could make a decision whether it followed the process or not, um, overturn it or keep it in place, and then you went on to the appellate, or to the Supreme Court. But that isn't even honored anymore. So council says, who gives them the authority? And then you look at the Constitution. <laughs> but um, I, and I think there really needs to be a clear separation 
a clear separation of our courts from our council. And our ethics, our, our removal procedure should say that if you interfere over here, we're gonna go ahead and start removal or there's a process to remove you for interfering with the courts because we're really unstable now. We can't, our businesses don't wanna come here. Um, it's really hard to do a lot of different things because our court is unstable because of all of this political stuff that's occurring. Thank you. And then just one thing to talk about the chief judge, like there's not even anything in there that spells out, because there's been times where we haven't had a chief judge, right? So there's nothing that spells out how what, does it, yeah. yeah, how does that happen if there's no chief? So that's something like that's not in there either. So you're, me, I have a question. So you're saying that the chief judge here states that the chief judge um, shall be elected at large by the board of the so but right now the council approves, yes, so that's a chief judge. Yeah, I think that's what I was referring to. On page 8, section 7 on vacancies, and this is what I mentioned earlier, there's parts here that seem to conflict with other parts. You go back to page 7 on D, the chief judge shall be elected at large. And then over on the next page, it says if there's a vacancy, the tribal council shall appoint a new chief judge. So that's the... It should go back and the people re-elect again, if that's what we mean. One of these, we have two different ways of doing it. Supreme, our supreme justices are our elders that are um, grounded in treaty, are grounded in uh, language and culture. Maybe that should be something because then that's how you're gonna preserve it. That's how you're gonna protect our our past and our future. Is if we do maybe did it that way. Anything more on that article? <laughs> and again, if you guys think of things after, like there, the, again, you have that survey. I can't, I can't reiterate that enough. We don't want it to just be like, once you leave here, it's done. No, you like, you guys have those surveys, but keep in mind they got to be turned in by December 22nd. And then also, I was told that the, um, so the definitions that we talked about earlier, uh, they are getting an attorney to start working on those definitions that'll be in English and in Lakota. So. Why, why is there a timeline when the, the, there's so much work to be done here and so we're going to pass something half baked again? Yeah, so, so I can't speak to that. I'm just, I was asked to help facilitate these meetings. I'm not, I'm not like where, why. I know like there's a time frame in trying to get things to like how this process is and, and terms and whatever. I'm, I can't speak to that. And I don't know if Jackie can speak to that. Um, the time frame for this. I think we do have a timeline that we set up to a process to follow, but it's not written in stone. So if there's if there's concerns that we have to take back to the task force saying we want another meeting at this certain time, then that those are open for discussion too and on request. So we're, this is for the people, and if they want us to meet, like in a community, it's just like in Wakpamani, I got a call, and they want to have a separate one because Wakpamani is so sporadic. They said, could you come out to the Wakpamani Lake? So I did contact the task force, and uh, we had volunteers, like Nakina volunteered and said, yes, we'll go out there, and they'll help provide the meal, and right now we're at a, set budget. We got funding from the tribe, aid to tribal government, uh, to start the process. And also, um, with the Bush Foundation, we're hoping to get funding for the springtime, because this isn't the, this is only the beginning, is to go out and get all this information gathered, and from all the districts, and then it's gonna, 
be compiled with data. We have a data software that's going to pick up on all the common things that people are bringing up. And that's where we needed people to, even if you leave here, you know, get copies of the survey and take them around to people. Help them what you understand and when you attended these, help them fill them out and come up with your ideas and your concerns because those is what our data is going to pick up. And then once the product is complete, uh, a draft is going to be put together. And that's the one we're talking about. An attorney is going to look at your suggestions of defining every one of these articles and these, the language they put in there. Define it so that people have a better understanding when we bring it back the second time. This is the first wave of just bringing the information out. The second time, we're going to come back with a finished product with the attorney review and everything. And we want it all translated to Lakota so people uh, can understand that and have a better idea of what's being done. And then um, that will be brought back to the people. And, and if they see something they're not happy with in there, they can voice again. You can voice again and bring up your suggestions again. And we want it to be uh, where people are satisfied what's going to go on the ballot. And we won. The last secretarial election was, was not by the people. It wasn't taken out like this. It was by the tribal council. And so, you know, we wanted to have this coming from the people. That's why I don't want to really speak up right at this time. I'm only here to hear, listen. And, you know, and that's where, um, my, where I stand as a task force member. So Jackie, so what you're saying is that the council isn't going to take no legislative action on this, this constitution? No, um, we're going to, this is all coming from the people. So, you know, that's why we encouraged our council reps to be at all the meetings to hear what the people want. So when they get out there and they're going to vote on this to bring it forth, then you're going to have that support from your leadership. And at this time, you know, I was really happy because we had um, a majority of our council, you know, but one that supported this because they all ran on change. And, and when we brought that forward to give us the permission to get this started, they were all for it. So I, I feel really optimistic that it's going to be, um, this change is coming in a positive way and, and also from our leadership. So, you know, that's... Pretty much where. I have a question for um, Jackie. Um, so I guess what I was saying earlier, I didn't explain myself that well. I would like to see, um, okay, currently the council is going by this constitution now. So when you make ordinances, you go by this. So how can you gauge or um, assess yourselves on how well you have gone by this thus far with this administration? and saying, okay, we made a const, like I'm gonna go back to the, um, to the public safety issues, you know, um, about keeping our um, public safety measures intact for the people. How can you gauge or assess yourself to say, well, we followed this article and we did this. Therefore, we made an ordinance to, um, to what was that one where about the, um, the, the, yeah, so how, um, like, say, like, you know, you're um, going to be um, pushing people out because they weren't good tribal members for whatever reason. What do they call that now? Um, banishment. banishment, yeah. So that, that was discussed because I was at one of the meetings um, last year. And I think that it would really be good to, so that, would, that way we can trust and assure, we have assurances that, hey, they're, they're trying and this is what they're already doing with their, um, with their conduct of order for business when they do this because they're following up on the ordinances they did. So if you could name some of the major ordinances that should have gone to the people, but they haven't, but you know, this is the council's um, authority to do this. So I guess I just kind of want to see an assessment in our districts of how you're gauging themselves. You know, that's good to hear because, you know, Beth said on council too, and we see a lot of these uh, issues coming to the floor of ordinances and laws, and, and there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of opposition on how things are passed, but you know you've got 20 council reps and they want to get
get something on the floor, you're sometimes I'll vote it in committee. You know, they just want it to go to council and the, we want, there's some of us that would like to see things going back out as for a referendum or, or um, at least go back and have input from their districts. But sometimes it doesn't work that way when you got 20 people and you all have to um, fight to get something passed or tabled or stopped. But, you know, just being on council, there's a lot of, a lot of things I see that we don't follow in our constitution. And that's the part, that's why I volunteer to push this through to make change. And, and enforcement is a big one. And that's the separation of powers. You know, a lot of people stated that in several of our other, other um, uh, meetings. So, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of, thing, a lot of suggestions that I'm going to make when I do my survey because, you know, there's a lot of things I see being on council too. So, but this is what you guys see. We're here to hear what you guys want changed, what you see. Bring it all out, you know, so that we can have record of it and um, encourage people to fill out those surveys. The more you fill out, the better um, outcome we can have changed on these um, constitutional reforms. Uh, but one thing that I would like to add to, to that is um, when she talked about the referendum, referendum um, there's like nothing specified in there about things that should be considered for reference So that should definitely be something like hey, maybe if it has to do with education or if it has to do with public safety Or if it has to do with this then maybe we should be adding specific topics that are referendum because you're right that the people should well, be we lived that bond one in that last uh, election and then we don't even get to vote on that that there whenever the tribal council takes out a bond it's both, they're supposed to go to the people and ask the people for permission for that. So yeah. again, tribal council is violating the yep. constitution. And, and I don't want to get into like what tribal council is doing, because we all know what they're doing. We're here to bring solutions or input from the people. And, and what I'm here, and we're here three here, here to take this stuff back to them in hopes that, that we can get this change. So I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to turn into that kind of direction about what they're not doing because we all know what the, what's going on, and it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. yeah. And since I like, I'm. I. This is my first time. Like, um, I'm not young, but I'm not old. But like, for me to be able to be a part of this this process, like, and, and to see like like this is starting now. Like, I'm I'm very fortunate to be able to be a part of it too. So. I have a question here. Um, you know, I have one of Paul's old constitution bylaws here that I got. In. Um, and in 2008, there was a, a constitution amendment that was voted on, and it has attached amendments. It goes all through AA, clear up to Z. Okay, now, there are some that didn't, didn't pass that time. Like there's uh, there's one on N, and that's in the still on. Well, but um, anyway, it has a, now. This is an old one. Okay, so that's to cultivate native arts, crafts, and culture to administer clear charity and to protect the health and general welfare of the tribe. Now that was changed, and it wasn't. It, it, was, it was. It was voted. I mean, it was in the amendment, but it didn't pass. And it had. And they changed it to regulate, preserve, and strengthen native arts, crafts, culture, and the Lakota language. Now that was changed, and um, and it wasn't changed through the voting. So. Uh, I was just wondering, did you, did you go to, could you find the, the, what we voted on that time? Did they actually put what they, the changes was going to be in there when they, when the people voted? Because, uh, I mean, 
Yeah, and, it, and, and they changed it. So that's, that's, and there's some more here too that it was changed and the voters didn't get it. They voted to not change it. Yeah, and it's in your chain. Yeah, so I, I wasn't a part of like the task force. Um, then looking at the 2008 revisions that ended up in the Constitution, and I don't know if Jack, you guys caught that, uh, what she said. Um, she said there were some revisions, some revisions from the 2008 um, that, that weren't approved, but still got changed in the Constitution, and they shouldn't have been changed. That's what she said. So, so as you can see, like that was something they, they, yeah. but yeah, so that's what she said. So is this the real constitution? Yes. And that's what the copy that was been given out, so if you know anything about it, <laughs> it just on the chart, so, so on the chart, what section, this was second. So do you see, like, so um, on this, this slide here, it says section 4, N, it says revised. But even then, like, you're on the back of the, on the back where it says the voting, the voting says it wasn't supposed to be revised. So that's, that's just the, yeah, there's, yeah. so again, I don't want to get into yeah. that. I want to get into. I mean, yes, I know. We'll 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 go back and look and see. Try and find something. What if we, they can't find out what is actually the, what it should be? Um, Maybe a suggestion would be well, to try to clear up as many. Yeah, we'll we'll try and figure out what's supposed to be on there and what's supposed to not have been changed. So now I want to get back because again, we only it's we're only on article. We're only on article five. Oh, now we're on six district organizations. I guess when I read this, uh, um, correct me, audience, uh, does this basically uh, take out all the communities to have a voice in its in its vested and elected officers, um, the elective executive board, uh, just? Want to see that? Uh, that's how I understand it. In, yeah, in Article Six, and then uh, there's a number of older people in our district. Basically, said that we're neutralized now because uh, it's um, the Article Six uh, um, took the authorities away from the communities. I just want to know for sure if the group understands it like that. I do want to speak for Oglala that they desire to have uh, some of that authority back in their communities. So that's uh, what I'd like to say. And, uh, thank you. Um, so I kind of marked up my whole section about um, this Article 6 because um, uh, it talks about our constitution that a district should, um, is supposed to establish a constitution and then it gives all kinds of language in here about giving the authority to the president and vice president. So the tribal constitution gives them this authority, but it then in our constitution, in our district, our district constitution says that it's our district council that has the authority. The authority is not vested in the president and vice president. Also, um, in, in talking about uh, who we are as Lakota people, uh, we all derive from our Teoshpaye. And so there's nothing um, within this constitution that is talking about that. And so um, as we, you know, again, going back into your preamble that it's saying that we're supposed to preserve our Lakota culture and stuff. Um, so where else in here um, does it promote that? So we should, um, our families, um, we know that culturally and historically um, changes come through your families. But in this, in this Constitution, under Article 6, in this district organization, it takes that authority away from your families and even our communities. So if we just went based off the 36 communities on the reservation, so our district council can usurp the authority of our district council um, and expend funds because this says they can expend funds. 
when our communities never then get to have input or say in how the fun those funds get expended. I have a couple issues or concerns of this district organization. I think to clarify what Maggie was saying, there's maybe somewhere down in there where we say the president shall call and preside over all councils. We just, that's a district president we're talking about, not the tribal president. So I think we need to clarify that. And one other one where it says that the, the various districts may consult with representatives of the Interior Department on all matters. Again, I think we should say federal government agencies. Uh, Indian Health, for example. When this was written, Indian Health was under the Department of Interior. And then it left there later on. And uh, further on down, there's, we say, The district may expend, may expend monies in the district treasure for the benefits of the district. I think that should, should say shall, because may means that they don't have to spend it on the district people. They don't want to. And the same one too, may keep a roll of those, I think say shall keep a roll of those. That's why we don't get good counts in the district, because it really says they may, well, if they want to, they, they can. If they don't want to, they don't have to. I think those two should be shell. And another thing in here I think we should add somewhere in here is we always hear that the district can take issues directly to the tribal council, but it doesn't say that in here. Um, revisiting the cons district constitution and bylaws, but and it says um, it shall be shall not be inconsistent. So I guess we have to wait till we get this all done, right? <laughs> but again, we go back to um, autonomy, district autonomy. Can we go ahead and be a step ahead of what we want for our district as local as our local control with our executive board? That that's something that I think we're going to have to bring up at our district. Is it going to cause a, a friction with us and the tribal council? You know, how do we work, how do we negotiate all of that? It's my question. Well, and I wish I had an answer to that. <laughs> um, I would just say like how like whenever we were doing revisions to that OST Child and Family Code, like those are still going on now. Um, people would ask me, well, how do we do that now with these going on? And how I would answer it is, you still follow the code. You still follow what is law. Doesn't matter if there's revisions going on now, but you're still doing what is right now. Um, keep in mind, I guess, keeping in mind that this is going on and that we hold, like it's coming from the people, so, and you're one of those people. So keeping in mind what you guys are doing in your district constitution is what I would say. Yeah. 